Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, I'm joined by Pastor John as we discuss what it's like to enter the pulpit after an absence, and we discuss this week's message in our series entitled An Integrated Life. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching. Uh, Back in the armchair is Pastor John. Pastor John. Hello, everybody. It's been a couple of weeks. Welcome back. Uh, We started a series uh, while while you were away. We Mm -hmm. started the series and uh, continued the series called An Integrated Life this week. Um, But why don't you tell you, you were actually in a part of the country that I was in earlier. Yes. Did a different cruise, different, different, some of the different uh, locations, but, uh, but uh, some, some similar type things. How how was your trip? Yeah, it was great. It was great. I, you know, it's one of those things. uh, I think one of our uh, members, Alan Cleveland, said before we left, he said, it's just hard to describe. And you guys went, you know, you yeah. know, it's just hard to describe. If you've ever been anywhere that is, has spectacular scenery in this world, you know, when you come back and try to describe it to someone else, or even when you show photos, if those of you are following on your social media, you put together a video, mine's putting together these, these photos. It's just, even those don't do justice, because when you're standing there and you're looking in front of this incredibly vast scene bef- before you it's it's just hard to put into words but I uh, loved it uh, I just told someone last night it occurred to me last night that one of the things that I, that, that was uh, very meaningful for us is uh is that yes we were on a cruise for seven days we did a land tour for four days a- after that but I think the best part somebody asked what was the best part yeah we, we did some f- really fun things your version of the, uh, the seeing the whales the when whale, you guys yeah. went uh, we did the dog sled race and, oh wow and, uh, we, we did all we did several several things like that but by far the best thing was it was just seal and me yeah. Yeah. Even dinner time, you probably you guys probably sat together at, the, at a, as a family at a table. But even dinner yeah. time, they said, "You want to sit with other people? Or you want to sit by yourself?" And like, I said, "No, no right to, for this us. trip, just us." Yeah, and that's the same thing. When we go, they always ask us, "Do we want to sit with other families or whatnot?" And and I, I know some uh, I know some pastors that they they never shut the 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 get to know people thing off yeah i i definitely do i mean we always interact with people while we're on the boat oh, yeah. eating eating at the table that's like where there's great family fellowship that's where there's great conversations i'm sure with you and seal this yeah. being an anniversary trip especially you know when you're out there too there's there's no cell phone coverage there's no wi-fi there's no i mean there's no interruptions so it's just you and 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 your family you and your your yeah. wife yeah. you get to focus on it focus on each other well we had plenty of moments where we were you know when we did excursions we're eating with other people and yeah and uh you're just around people a lot so you end up talking to a lot of people yeah which is great i love that uh but i really liked being uh being just just with her and me and spending some really great time together doing having great experiences together as she said i don't know if you even thought this but she's like I never dreamed we'd be. We, I never dreamed that we would do something like this. That we would even want to do something yeah. like this. But it just came up, and uh, and and we both we both said we'd like to do that at some point. Just it's a bucket list kind of. Place. It's a bucket list, a kind, bucket of place. list kind of place. And I would say to anybody who can or is maybe thinking about it, and uh, just go for it. You know. Just yeah, do there's it. a lot of different ways to get to Alaska, uh, whether it's cruises or, and, and actually, you know, Gene Ginn, who's in our praise band and Kitty Ginn, who you and I both know, you've known them for a long time. They were in your former church and now they're here. They also did Alaska earlier, did it very differently. They went in reverse from Anchorage down and they mm-hmm. did a lot more interior things because the state is so gigantic. You see one part of it doesn't mean you've seen it all. And I was and, just looking at a map this morning or last night and, and, uh, and where we went was in the lower quarter 25 percent of the state yeah. there's a 75 percent of the state and we only saw part of that yeah 75 percent of the state we didn't even see yeah one of the tour guides that one of the excursion guides that took us out to um to uh mendenhall glacier uh was saying was asking are you know there anybody 
from Texas on the, on the on the bus, and he, other people, like, yeah, you know Texas, and he said, hey, you know, what I like to tell people from Texas is we're, we're three times larger than you are. <laughs> you can fit three <laughs> three Texases into Alaska, wow. which which Texas is the next largest state by landmass, wow. uh, which is it's incredible. I mean, you, when you when you take the 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 map, like you were saying, you take the map and you take it off and you put it on the continental United States, it it reaches from basically like like, you know, from Southern California all the way to like Chicago or something crazy. It's like some nuts Jeez, thing like yeah, that. Like, yeah. If you take that lower, because that's where we were. We were just in that lower, you know, that lower uh, eastern, southeastern, southeastern uh, corner. Alaska. And that, because, but there's so much cool stuff there. We had a great, yeah. great time. And I'm, I'm glad you did too. And it's, you, and it's weird coming back. I don't know what, what it was like for you coming back to, to the church. Cause I mean, this is, this is what is this, Tuesday? So yeah. it's Tuesday. And I, I feel like I've just, missed yeah. a lot of things. I know I've missed a lot of things. My email inbox is telling me I've missed a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And then you just got to come in, you know, a little bit cold into yeah. uh, in, into the service on, on on Sunday. And you know, I I, I tuned in to the uh, barely tuned into the mm-hmm. live stream. Mm-hmm. La- a week ago Sunday, so yeah. uh, but that was even that was kind of choppy. Yeah, so it's hard to watch. So yeah. I didn't really, I really didn't really sit with the whole service with it. So you feel a little out of sorts yeah. coming back from that trip. Did you feel that was the same way? Like you're, yeah, say, absolutely. Hey. And I and I think I think especially so when we came back, I the the benefit here, and I'd love to hear your thoughts because we did it differently, right? So I came back and I had. I came back on a Tuesday, so I was back in the office Tuesday, oh, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. So I had that that kind of runway to get back into Sunday, and you came back Thursday evening, and then right into you know right into Sunday. So what was yeah. it like going? I no, mean, for me, was, I had was, that runway. I was really glad that I did, but yeah, I, that would have been that would have been way better. It was a, it was pretty intense. It was uh, you know th- Thursday late. You you get, you get jet lag. Your body still thinks it's four hours behind. Yeah. And then uh, all day Friday was just a full court press to get ready for. I had a funeral on Saturday in, in Dunedin, um, and uh, it was a longer f- funeral, so we were there for quite a bit of time, probably mm. six hours uh, just wow. plus travel time. Um, it's total time to do all the things beforehand, and the meal afterwards, and the, and the reception, and then the, and the, uh, the the scattering of the ashes afterwards. And then and then you're you're tired from that, and then you and then it's it's football season, so uh, you know you got to watch the, and it's the seven thirty game, which are the worst. The worst. So you know there it's a seven thirty game, and you got to watch it because I, I wasn't able to see the game. Um, um, uh, on you didn't uh, miss on, anything. I did not miss it. anything with the first <laughs> week, so we lost. So it was just as well. But so I was going to watch every play. So yeah. by the time I got to Sunday, I was I was pretty wiped. Yeah, and then an eight fifteen. Call 815 time. start, yeah, 8-15. which is which, as you know, means you're, you're at least by 715, 730. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. you've been up longer than that, just, yeah, just going prepping, through notes, prepping, and, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I, you know, I this it's different than when you're just gone a week, you know, when you're gone a week and you miss a Sunday. You feel, yeah, a little, little, little off kilter when you get back, when you miss beyond. I don't know beyond seven days or six days in a Sunday. I mean, I remember there were I just, probably ten years where I did not, I did not, t- I never, I did not take a vacation that was longer than five days. Yeah, I mean, wow. there, there was probably ten years I didn't take a vacation. Actually, went before Julie and I came here to FBC Lakeland. I I never took a vacation longer than five or six. I think wow. the longest was six days in terms of my so professional. Never, life. never missed a Sunday. I, I almost never missed a Sunday. I mean, wow. almost never. I mean, and yeah, and most of those did not miss Sundays. I mean, some of them did. Some of them, you know, we'd go on like four day cruises that that would go over the Sunday, but it was not. Uh, it you know, I remember we took um, a vacation here that was longer than seven days. Just because there's more staff and there was more, uh, you know, backup support and mm-hmm. and things like that, it, it was like whoa. I, and I also got really uncomfortable after day five. I mean, like there was this like real uh, agitation, like to get back, you know, to cause what, what am I missing? What you know, what am I you know not? What's what's ha- you know that sort of thing? Yeah. And so yeah. it took a little while for me to kind of re. Kind of refocus that that chip 
set in my my mind a little bit. So, so. so those of you who are listening to this right now, um, and maybe if you work in schools or in business or whatnot, uh, I, I don't know if you have that same kind of burden that yeah. we're describing right now. But that is a typical what pastor what, burden, yeah. typical burden that a pastor will feel. And I think you're right. I think we, we are we are we are blessed. Yeah, it is in a very fortunate situation that we are in here that we can you and Julie and the mm-hmm. kids you could take that multiple weeks at a time. I always even with the multiple weeks, I, I still hear about these other pastors who are who typically in a typical year will take the month of July off. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, I've heard that as well. It's too. a whole month off. So yeah. that, that's I mean I I'm I'm out of source with with two weeks well, off. I, I took, can't imagine. I took sabbatical two years ago, which sabbaticals are supposed to be. I mean, there's purposeful rest that goes along there. I was working on my doctorate like. 10 hours a day. I mean, it was not a lot of rest. No purposeful rest. I mean, I got into a groove where there was a lot more kind of headspace time because I had to, you know, I remember the first week of sabbatical trying to sit down and go immediately into paper writing mode. And my mind was just like, I kept checking my email and, you know, check and I, I'd even respond. And I remember there were times I'd actually come into the office and you're like, what are you doing here? Like, stop, you know, it, because it's like so difficult to kind of, but then after about week three, you kind of get in the groove and you're like, okay, well, you know, I can, I can ease into my day a little bit. I can, you know, get into the, the, the writing mode, I can, in the study mode and the, you know, sit, sit with papers and then go for a walk and kind of think through what I just wrote and then go back and read. You know th- those sorts of cadences, but for a little while, it wasn't it, it? Took a while to get there. And you, you might have you and I might have sh- have the same same s- symptoms. I'm 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 I've, I've said I'm a terrible vacationer. Yeah. I've gotten better. I have gotten a lot better. I have I gotten say, better. I've, I've gotten a lot better. But My it, wife is it, very good at, at making me better it's at usually, that. It's usually three days before the little the, before the, the the all the chatter, internal chatter, is begins to calm down. Well, and you can ask Julie. I mean, she will tell you there were vacations that uh, like we cut short because I would get not because of anything like externally pulling me back but internally i'd get real angsty and not Hmm. not really fun to be around and so we'd get back you know just like home and and it took i think there was a couple things and 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 i don't know how what the shift was for you but there there i know you've done a whole study on on sabbath rest and Mm -hmm. things like that and that i know that you and i've talked about this in the past that that's that's really changed your outlook on even vacation and things like that which is somewhat different but related for me it was you know jules really um she she makes sure that when you know there's it, it's funny because there's a lot of our trips there is there's goal setting that goes on at the trip like making sure we do certain things nice. and, so yeah. we kind of scratch the itch yeah, you got a of, travel agent for a travel agent for a for a spouse oh she's yeah she's incredible and then there are trips where uh we just we just rest, you know, we just, we're like, we're not going to, you know, the goal is not to have any goals, right. Or to have very few, like just, you know, and uh, those have been, and the cool thing about the cruises, and I don't know if you guys experienced this, is there a little bit of both? They are, you know, you get, you get, you get a little bit of adventure and activity and action. And then sometimes where you're just at sea and it's just, okay, let's wake up late and let's, you know, just, chill out and you know go even, s- even the excursions for us were like let's do a couple but let's don't kill yeah. ourselves with the excursion so which is why we got to just to- tootle around with the, c- the city of Juno rather than take one of the excursions out yeah. we just we just walked around and yeah. enjoyed and just enjoyed it yeah it's a cool town it was a cool town. Smallest uh, state capital by population in the United States. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, L- lots it looks of questions like a, of whether they should even have it as Juno. Yeah. I mean, is that the one you can't get to by any, uh, by either by boat, only by boat or boat? Or, oh, to actually, yeah, it's the you, only you, one that you you have to take an airplane in or boat, in, or boat yeah. in. Yeah, you can't drive. There's no. It's weird. I looked at the, the guy said that. I looked at the map and I'm like, sure enough, it doesn't go back to. We're like actually stuck here. Like we can't. <laughs> if it's not for the ship, we're not getting off this yeah. island, this tiny little island. Because we, we could swim. Said, I, I think suppose. it was like. Wasilla or somewhere like that where the 
since Sarah Palin was from, yeah. you know, they were they considered that or one of the other towns. And then Anchorage is gigantic up in, but it's up north, so it's further away and things like that. They they were talking about, but I I remember going into Juneau and and this is not a travel podcast, so we're going to get to the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. sermon. But I remember walking into Juneau. And I don't know if you had this experience. I'm thinking downtown Lakeland is bigger than this. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. like I was like there, yeah, there are more there are more people like here. Yeah. So it's crazy. Catch a can was the same way. Catch a can, yeah. Skagway, same way. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 uh, we got to go to Icy Strait, which is uh, just off of uh, another another town, and then Victoria, which is in Canada, was beautiful. Uh, but actually, that's a quite a a much larger city than I expected. Um, but Juno was just tiny. It yeah. was, t- and when they pointed out the the Capitol building, I was like. Really? That's your huh, capital. That's I, was thinking, I was thinking like visions of Tallahassee or Atlanta, yeah, gothic, these big gothic, domes, yeah, yeah. you know, and the pillars and you know, long steps, and it, and it looks like, you know, it looks like you know where an insurance company might have their offices. You know, kind of thing. It's very nothing wrong with insurance companies, but you know, it, they don't tend not to have same, or, or it's not same offices. look as a, as a capital building. Yeah. yeah. But so so it was it was all in all it was a good it was a good trip and it was just and the effect on the preaching moment is is you know it's definitely felt because you I mean you're you're dealing with it physically but you're also just you've been away and you feel like you know part of, part of the 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 life of the of the preacher is the connection with the people and you've yeah. been disconnected for for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And this. And, and this week, it, kind of interesting because you, you were, we were talking about integrating faith and family, and you spending a lot of time just you and Seal, kind of having like that that, yeah. mar- that that an intense kind of marriage moment. And and uh, but you know we're in this series. Uh, you talked quite a bit about the series. I, I opened up talking really about the series. But as you were looking at this concept of faith and family, you, mm-hmm. know, you definitely had some laser focus on the 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 integration part. What were the challenges that you faced as you were looking at uh, the actual, you know, the texts from Old Testament, and New Testament? We both touched on Deuteronomy six. We both touched on Ephesians, Ephesians five, five and six, um, and, we both, and we both backed up from what we originally we originally were just going to just going to talk about. Children and fathers. Yeah, I couldn't do it. And I don't know. I, I, originally, we, we both yeah. felt the same impulse. So, you know, yeah. We got to talk about because it's right marriages. there. Because yeah. it's right there, and one leads into the other, right? Yeah. So, what were the challenges that 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 you faced as you were kind of unpacking this passage? This is interesting uh, because I, I thought this sermon was going to be different than it actually ended up being. Because I, I thought it was going to be about prioritizing. And it sort of is that it's prioritizing your family. So I thought the emphasis was going to be talking about how we prioritize families, but really end up, it ended up being more of um, of what what is the family relationship like? Yeah. Um, how are we to be around our children? And then that whole bit with the children, how children are to be with their parents. And mm-hmm. said, oh well, I you know, so I need to. So really, so it was a fir- the first thing that needed to happen was I needed to have a mental shift. Yeah. To okay, this is what this text is about. So this is what the sermon needs to be about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went. I, I Basically, I'm confessing that I went in with a predisposed, predisposed idea of what it should be about, yeah. and I needed to change that mid, midstream to say, "No, this is this is what it is about." Yeah. Uh, and so and then it, then it was really just it, it was trying to unpack uh, mm-hmm. well what the what what was there. Yeah. Um, and I had, but I love that you did this at the end. I, I I'm so glad that you did it. I wish I'd have done it as well, but I just. Couldn't land on that. Your last point was to uh, bring all that investing into the in, in, into people in your home, bring it into the church. Yeah, I, I I wanted to do that. I had it in my notes. I had it in my. Yeah. Just, I, I I pulled it out. Yeah, I said no. I'm just going to just land with you know, fathers, children, and, yeah. and and spouses. Yeah, and for me, it was interesting because I again I had like you. I think I had some predis pre kind of you know ideas like I like I mentioned at the beginning of the message. This you know I, I've. I've preached probably a dozen messages on mm-hmm. on faith and family, and so I had uh, actually gone back and looked at a couple of those because obviously when you do faith and family, the Ephesians five and six comes up, uh, the the Deuteronomy six comes up. So I went back and looked at those things and had initially kind of an idea of what I was going to do, and then you, you being in the congregation and and on I had spent the last couple of weeks spending some time with Celebrate Recovery, which is a, a recovery. Um, Ministry here at FPC and spending some time with those those folks and realizing that 
and, and realizing that there are fo- quite a few folks in Vine where the biggest challenge of preaching on the family is their their preconceived idea of the family, and also, and you did you touched on this too, but the but the brokenness that they experience yeah. in the family, where we can we we could present the biblical ideal, but without talking about the redemptive you know, the redemptive option of God's people. So that's where I, I actually circled in, which initially on Wednesday of last week it was not there, but then after Thursday it was the Exodus twenty two orphans and widows kind of yeah, the, great. the impetus of God's people as a people was to always care for the broken families and to that the that the ideal of the family in Genesis two, is always meant to affect the broken families and and where, so there, it, it was I, I in hindsight as I look back on it I think maybe this is one of those situations where there was some I felt a, I felt a little bit disjointed in the delivery but I had so many different uh, I, thoughts and ideas that I wanted to try to get through that I. Um, that I, I wasn't, you know, it wasn't always it wasn't always easy to connect those dots. But I wanted it to get well, there. So. Well, I will say when I looked at your um, when I when I watched your sermons, I I I I, I will move the scroll bar up ahead and see how long the sermon is. Yeah. Just, mostly because I got to figure out my time when yeah, I'm sitting right. down to watch it. So I was like, oh, he's got a forty two minute sermon. What, what, it, was, what, it, was, it was a chunk there. Uh, so, so, which is not my not typical, not typical for me. Yeah. So, but I will say that. So I was like, oh, okay, you can focus on this. But th- then I was thinking, uh, but it flows. I mean, that's that's a nice. I mean, you well, and I'll tell you too. This is what happens, and we talked about this before. What happens in the practice versus what happens in real time? That was a good eight to ten minutes longer than the, the all the practices I had done. And I think some of it was f- reading the sp- reading the room and feeling like they're not maybe they're not tracking with this point or they are tracking. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we yeah, put a little more weight here, yeah. take a little less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was I think some of that too. But uh, I I, uh, I I loved the um, you spent some time on the um, on the uh, sports contracts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but making the point that. That marriage is not a contract. Yeah, um, and you know, I know this is a specific part of your, your sermon there, but it was. I thought it was, it was really great that, that that this is really about the. It, it is a. It is the covenant relationship of a husband and wife. Not well, maybe in any no no yeah. wedding ceremony is ever going to say here's your contract. Right. Well, I'll ask you. I ask you this because you've done a lot of weddings. You've done a lot of pre-marriage counseling, mm-hmm. right? I mean, how many folks? I, I, my experience is, if you if you're sitting down, you're talking to a potential couple that you're going to marry that they have this preconceived idea about what marriage and family is all about yeah. and, and a lot of times it's 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 if they're not really centered in the church and sometimes even if they are they have this very contractual mentality do you experience have you experienced that when you're doing pre-marriage counseling with folks and you're having to kind of unpack that for them and say well okay if that's the case then 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 divorce is going to be on the table for you right if, it, if you look at it from a covenant standpoint and i wish i'd emphasized and i didn't use the term covenant because then i started thinking oh that word you gotta is, unpack that word now, so guess, much there yeah, yeah. like there's not an out clause in the covenant, right? Yeah, and, and that's the. So I don't know. Have you not, not not in that not in the way that you just described, but in the concept of what you're describing? Yes, yeah. uh, absolutely, absolutely. Talk about that and talk about the the how we how we are to even see our marriages. Yeah, you know, how do we think about our marriages? Which is what you're talking about. That we don't think about them as a you know, contractual obligation. You do this, and I'll do this. And if you don't do this, then then I get out. Then yeah. I'm out. You, you broke know? the contract, and I'm, I'm good. You yeah. know, I'll, I'll talk about the fact that the marriage itself is greater than greater than the two individuals. Who yeah. make up the marriage? The marriage itself is an institution of of God, mm-hmm. and because of that, it's greater than the two of you. So it is to, it is to not easily at all be broken. Yeah, the only there are very few things that actually qualify for why it could be broken. Yeah, and um, and I realize that sinful people are going to be in that. And sinners, yeah, sinners are going to behave sinfully, and I, I, we understand grace and all that. But the concept, the thinking, of the, I think the biggest problem we have with our with marriages and any relationships is is how we think about those relationships, yeah, yeah. and so we have a, I have a lot of conversations uh, about that. And I think I, I brought that out absolutely, yeah. It, you know, and, and it was fun for me because in the in the service, I'm I'm at the eight fifteen service, and and Kelsey and Zach who just got married, yeah, brand are, new, are, are, are there a couple and, weeks, and, yeah. And uh, and I'm looking up, and there's Anna and Noah are up there, and so in just a year. These yeah, are our, yeah. these are all newlyweds in, in the room here, and I, and I'm and I'm called out because I could see them. So I called out the. You know, Zach and Kelsey and said, "You guys got it right. Yeah. You guys, you guys, we make make your marriage 
you know, priority uh, and make, make faith a priority in your in your marriage. And you know, they're worshiping together, they're mm-hmm. studying together, their Bible. You know, they're they're that's the kind of thing. And I don't know that everybody in that room that you preach to, and the room that I preach to, I don't know that everybody um, understands that. Yeah, has that in their hardwiring. Yeah. And 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 to some extent, you know, there. I look at this. Say, what was you know what was modeled for them? What what you know what when premarriage counseling, you kind of un, unpack some of those things that you know. What do they come in with the the What are the preconceived ideas that they come in with about what marriage and family and parenting too? Because one of the things that you talked about. Uh, quite a bit in detail was was the parent child relationship and and really the the create the the counter cultural thought of Paul's time that fathers should not exasper, exacerbate or, yeah. or provoke to anger yeah. their children so there's a there's a part where the parent you know doesn't just you know they, they have an obligation to lead and guide their their children in such a way that is uh, winsome and encouraging, not authoritative and hammering. And I, I grouped all that whole thing together and just talked about it from the standpoint of Christ's you know service and yeah. and sacrifice. But th- I think that was a real. Well, key and then your point. last your your second and last point was the the uh, the idea of investing into yeah. the into the people in your home. That's I heard children. Yeah, I heard. You, yeah. who are speaking those words, and see what I see of you week in and week out is how you pour yourself into yeah. your children. Yeah. You know, as like I've said to you and Julie both, that, that said, that, you know, you, this is, you know, you, parenting is something you get one shot to get. You only get one. You, you get one shot. No do overs. No do overs at it, and uh, yeah. and you need to do it right. Yeah. And you guys are doing it right. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I w- talking about one other topic that we both kind of mentioned in in some respects related to the Ephesians 5 portion with the wives and the the husbands thing right so the big the big you know kind of barrier to people understanding Ephesians 5 is they get tripped up on those words yeah, you know, they get tripped yeah. up and we both mentioned that so yeah you, it, was, it was interesting and and you were like I, I'm not even going to go into the unpacking of these these words here because we, we it'd be a whole and we probably should we should something to think about just come come back and unpack some of these tricky words yeah. in relationship words like like submit but I did love what what you did it, it, you, you know you pulled out an example from ministry that you've had with 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 particular people who've had a problem with it and just illustrated it, 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 there is a if the if the if the husband does the work of Christ in the home and takes seriously not just in a nebulous fashion but what does Jesus actually do for the, his people mm-hmm. he lays down his life certainly you can lay down you know your 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 desires and or you know whatever it is that you know that that angstiness that goes the other direction because to abuse and you know neglect and, and all those different things you you mentioned like a specific example so if that was the case oh yeah, yeah. Then, then then it would be easier to be the kind of yeah. wife that that is you know honoring their husband and is encouraging their husband and is in some respects submitting to to that because they'll be the kind of person that is uh is sacrificing yeah. for me, you know, yeah. like, and they'll see Christ ex- exemplified, right? Exactly. And that's why it's a yeah. it's a reciprocal relationship, just like it is with Christ in the church, right? Not contractual, but reciprocal, right? And uh, I thought that was a real powerful way to kind of diffuse that because it's like you can almost I can almost think of people that I know in our congregation and other congregations who would be in the camp of I'm definitely I, that submit and I will not say those yeah. words submit or obedience at all yes but if you go to the and but the husbands all like how many of those would say well I, I'm going to be like Christ to the church right but then what they're really thinking of is Lord <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they're forgetting the Savior sacrifice, they're sitting yeah. in the Savior part which yeah. is yeah. well that's everything right I mean that's the sacrifice that's the service I mean G- that's what Jesus said he came to do I came not to be served but to serve and, and it's always interesting to me how, how many whole denominations distort that part of it but then overemphasize the first part and then distort the second part and I think that was that illustration was a powerful way to kind of diffuse that you know it's not a very popular passage to have uh, for for many people to have no, most I don't have a lot of brides and grooms asking for that passage to be read at their no. weddings um, no. although they should you yeah. know for the very reasons I mean you brought it out as well is that you, you talked about the fact the sacrificial uh, role of the of the husband I thought it was really interesting too is that 
even before you got into wives submit to your husbands as a you know, as part of your, your reverence for the Lord, um, there was this Christian submit to one another. Yeah. And so there's this call for everybody to, to submit. And yeah, which you brought out you, very nicely. If you in there, can't yeah. see the 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 goodness and the generosity and the giving and the sacrifice of Jesus, and if you can't respond to that with submission to Jesus, you're never going to figure that, out that yeah. you're never going to figure out that submitting to one another, or sub, certainly submitting to one another in the marriage relationship, or wives submitting to Christian husbands. You know, none of that's going to make sense. Yeah, and you you said too, and I, I it was just like a quick little quick little kind of statement that you made in terms of the it, it's just culturally unpopular to submit to anything. Yeah, I mean you you said this is not like we we willingly submit to nothing. <laughs> yeah, all, there's almost no, I mean in in, in and, I, and I think it was interesting when I was, I was when I was listening to it I was like yeah we really don't do it like intentionally i mean there's a lot of things we submit to unintentionally right i mean if you don't pay your mortgage you are going to submit to the yeah. laws of the land that yeah. foreclose on you i mean you submit to that yeah, right we've, we've thought that one through yeah it, 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 there's there's a lot of those but we don't think of it as like well i'm working for this bank or i'm working for that bank or you know but we are right i mean you don't have a job i mean we, we deal with a lot of folks that that struggle to make ends meet and they definitely feel themselves under the submission of of the the bill collectors. I mean, they feel that. And and if we're if we are the kinds of people that are ahead on our bills, we don't feel it as much, but it's still there. We're not, yeah. they only love us as yeah. long as we pay our bills, yeah. right? Lake and Electric still expects us to pay pay the yeah. bill. But yeah. so but it's interesting how those things we will submit to, we just don't call it that. Yeah. But when it comes to Christ and the and and his relationship to the church and how that translates into the family, that's the part that gets real sideways. I think if we if we did anything on Sunday that was useful, I would hope that it would be the sort of the collective thought of the church that making sure that we are attending to our our, our families yeah. and we're pouring into our families and and uh, I love that you 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 brought that to the church I would echo that absolutely into our church as well recognizing that you know not, not everybody's married yeah. Some widows widows in the church non married you know singles in the church young people in the church not married and not everybody has children yeah but everybody can get this yeah. and a lot of people are you know most people I would say are you know are, most of the our church population is married, yeah, and uh, most of them have children. Yeah, yeah. Now they may be adult children. Yeah, but they they have children. Yeah, and so and then and almost everybody. I can't think of anybody, even the single people I I know in this church, and probably most single people who have who don't have influence on children. Yeah, absolutely. Nieces and nephews, mm-hmm. you know, other people around mm-hmm. them. If they're teachers, they got you know, around teachers. So yeah. it was just an important. I think it was an important message for us to to remind ourselves as a congregation that that God has given to us. I didn't use this language. I, I thought about it several times. Just that the, the most basic form of government in the in, in, in the economy of God is the family. Is yeah. the family? It's the family. Yeah. It is the most basic place. It is ground zero mm-hmm. for discipleship. It is the place where where I did say this, but you, people, the children get their first glimpses of who God is mm-hmm. by what we teach them and what they see in us all those things it's just it is it is central I say it at every baptism it's interesting you mentioned the baptism at the yeah. end I say at every baptism um, that um, that they're going to get the that our job is to teach them yeah the parents job is to teach them and and they have the primary responsibility for the spiritual development of their children mm-hmm. not the church yeah yeah we're supplemental. We are. We yeah. love doing our part. Yeah. We love doing our part, uh, it, and it's so important. And you're going to do a baptism this week, mm-hmm. and in there you read your baptismal question. There's some form of a commitment, a public commitment that the church is going to make, and we we expect the church members to do that. Yeah. I know that you and others are dialing that up right now, yeah. and that's great. Yeah. I love that. that but um, but all of that is to say is that the, it's still the family. Yeah. 
that's the that's the main place where this is to take place. Yeah, and I, th- and I think we, you know, one of the things that has been has have been happening in, in FBC for the last couple of years is is trying to you know nurture the family ability to disciple children. Right? We have a family. We have rotations twice a year, family discipleship classes where you know people come in and talk about different issues. Some of them are very practical. I know I was talking to our student ministry director Josh Schweitzer, who's running the deci- the family discipleship. Cl- uh, classes in a few weeks and we were talking about you know the the role of of of, of monitoring technology as your kids you know start getting yeah, all getting the things devices and things like yeah. that now and and how does you know how does our role as parents um, in this Ephesians six and Ephesians five and and this Deuteronomy six kind of paradigm, how does that apply to you know my kid has a cell phone now, right? <laughs> because it does. I mean, and and it does in real practical ways. Uh, so how do you how do you navigate that? We've I think we've done uh, we've offered those resources to people to kind of help support the idea that it's not our job to disciple children you know sorry it's it's our job to supplement the discipleship yeah. of the children it's our job to to you know increase, come alongside them and yeah. coach them and yeah, yeah. And, to and, be a secondary yeah. you know level and, and and to fill in gaps because single parenting even the, and, well and even yeah. the best parents are not perfect parents right. you know it's like julie and i we do the best we can but we definitely have our down moments and for if 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 my children's entire faith picture is me and julie it might be pretty strong but if if it's if it's got other folks in the in the orbit as well it's even stronger right it's, it's, it, what is it uh, the the success the spiritual success of a of a child moving into into, into adulthood uh, can come down to one non-parent adult who cares and pours mm-hmm. in pours into a, into that child that's oh, powerful yeah absolutely well like you said, it's a it's an important part of our series, integrated uh, integrated life, faith and family. This week coming up, faith and rest. I think that's right. Uh, you can tell I haven't done my sermon for this week yet, but uh, faith and rest is coming up this week. I'll be in Vine. Uh, we'll I'll be I'll be at a wedding. Josh Schweitzer will be in Classic this week, so yeah. he'll be doing faith and rest, and uh, we we will ha- we'll have a great time with that. And I encourage anybody who missed this week's messages to go to our website fpclakeland.org. Go to the worship page and the sermon archive tab to watch complete services of both our Classic and Vine service. Also. So if you miss any one of our episodes of Armchair Preaching, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud. Those are the big uh, distribution sites for most podcasts. And so that you don't miss an episode, subscribe so you get notified when a new episode drops. Uh, And you can share it from there as well to your friends. John, great to see you. Great to have you back. And it is good to be back, everybody. I'll see you in a couple I'll weeks. See, I'll see you here. But I'll uh, be here, I, yeah. But I'll, yeah. I'll see everybody in a couple weeks. Yep, yeah. and we'll see everybody else next time.